One, two, three. Hey guys, Bill Nichols here. Lightroom video coming to you today. I'm gonna to talk about spot removal and a quick tip to help you visualize spots in Lightroom. So previously I launched my Lightroom series. I've just got three videos in it. I'll put them in the cards next to here so you can see them from the start. What I wanna do is really build a series helping you to learn Lightroom from the ground up. Originally I called it Lightroom Zero to Hero. I just really realized that there's a million Zero to Hero videos. So I'm just gonna call this Let's Talk Lightroom. So let's get at it. Let's talk Lightroom, spot removal, and spot visualization today. So what I have right here is I have Lightroom open. I've taken four images and put them into a collection. Uh, so the collection's right down here. You can look in some of my previous videos to get an idea about collections, how to create them, how to add images to them. But I chose four different ones. A landscape picture. I chose a product, a product uh, picture from an environmental shoot that I did at a violin company. Then I chose two portraits. I'm gonna show you some spot removal techniques. But to get into spot removal, what you want to do is make sure that you're in the develop module. So up here in the upper right, I chose develop. Then I can come over here, and you've got the spot removal tool right here. And if you want to get in the spot removal tool, you can click the spot removal tool, or you can just press Q, and that will open it up. So in the spot removal tool, you've got a couple of options. You've got clone or heal. I'll go through when I do one of the portraits and show you the difference of what clone and heal means. So let's just actually start with the portrait here. We'll pull up this uh, image right here of, well, this is me. Uh, so we'll pull up my headshot. So you've got clone and heal. You've got size, which is the size of your brush. So you can see the brush moving here. And I can change that size like this with the slider. Or what I like to use, because I'm usually in the image, is I like to use open and close brackets. So if you press on the left, open bracket, it makes it smaller. The right close bracket, it makes the brush bigger. So you've got that, you've got feather, and what feather does is feather is going to change the ring on the outside of it. So you can see that ring that's around it, and it'll be graduated out from being used to not being used. It's kind of like a gradient. And what that can do is that can make the transitions a bit smoother. You wanna be aware of using it though, because if you're in really close selecting something that you're selecting really tight, you probably wanna bring the feather down then the opacity is how much that effect is applied. And I'll show you that's really good to show on skin how it's applied. So let's just get started on this image. So when I look at this, I've got a few things here. If I was to bring down, actually I'm not gonna change the exposure or anything, but a few things that I know about my own face, I have some scars, so like right here and right here from hitting my head many times. And then I've got this line right here down my cheek. So let's just start here. We're gonna start with clone, I mean with a heel brush. And all that I need to do really is adjust my brush size. So one tip on brush size, I like to make the brush just a little bit bigger than, than the piece that I'm trying to correct. So like for this line that's right here, I don't want to go in with a big brush like this because when I do and I sample it, it's going to sample something that's the same size as that brush stroke from somewhere else. So it's probably going to include other textures and everything else. So I want to give it the smallest area to sample that covers the piece that I want to that I want to remove, so that it can get a really accurate sample. So I'm just going to click right here at the top of this line, and I'm just going to drag down. You're going to see it sample. And if I want to hide what, so right now it's showing me, and I can move this around if I'm not happy with where it's sampled, I can move this all around and change the sample. And if I want to see what it looks like but still keep that selected, I can press H. You'll see it go away, and that looks pretty good. Now it's, you can see the uh, texture right here, like where the hair's removed. So what I would likely do is go in and change the opacity. So you can see if I bring the opacity down to zero, there's that line. And as I creep up a little bit, I like to usually remove facial stuff in between 30 and 45. I feel like it still maintains the texture of the skin, um, and it doesn't make it look too plasticky. So that looks pretty good. I'll go up and I'll select another one. So we've got this little bump right here, if you see it. It's just a little divot in my head. Uh, I fell in a fireplace when I was a kid. The, the grate from the log uh, went right through my skull. So there it is, so that's removed. And then we've got these couple of little ones here. I'll just remove really quick. And a couple of things, so you can, um, let's zoom in. You zoom in with the Z, oh wow. And then um, hold down the space bar and you can click and drag around. All right, so a couple things here. So let's take one line. So if I start on this line, I can drag across, 
right? Now you can see it's more faint. I don't have to drag though, I can also just go to this little red dot and just click it. Then you'll see that it's gone. Okay, so that is with heal and with various opacities. Now, if I was to take, let's find something on my skin here. So let's sample this. So we've got this one right here. It's sampling from right below. I'm on heal, so if I was to come down here and sample my shirt, you'll see my skin color doesn't really change except when I hit the shadow. But what it's doing in heal mode, it samples the texture from where it's sampling, but it doesn't change the color value. It might change the shading depending on shadows or highlights there, but it's not gonna change the color. Now if I change this from a heal to a clone, you'll see that it's actually gonna change it. So let's move that up to 100%. And now I just have a black dot. It's cloning that spot where I am at whatever opacity I've set to there. So let's do this because this will help you with the um, feather as well. So there it is. If I, let's make it a little bit smaller. So you can see how it's nice and soft on the edges. If I change this feather and go to 100, you see the whole thing gets pretty soft. If I go to zero, it's going to be a very hard circle. So there's zero feather. There's about 50% feather and 100% feather. Then opacity, I can make it more or less transparent. I almost never use clone on skin. So I'll go back to heal, and now you can see it there. I mean, it's a big fake looking, you know, soft spot. But that's, um, you know, that's, that's because it's a huge brush and set it at 100% opacity. And it's sampling my t-shirt. So let's go ahead and find that spot. If I ever want to undo this, you'll see my hand, this changes to a hand when I go over it. I can change where it's sampled from. Or I can just click on that and press delete and it's gone. So that's your basics on clone and heal and spot removal. So let's get out of this image. Let's go to landscape image really quick. So <clears throat> in this image, the spots that I, would, that I would normally fix, this is a long exposure. There's a good chance that my camera had some hot pixels and I know where they are. So if I just come in here, right, and I press zoom, here's some stars, but then like see these red ones, these are just hot pixels. So I can go in, this is where I will hit, um, sometimes I will hit clone instead of heal. I'm gonna bring the feather down and then bring my opacity up. Right now I'm still just staying with uh, heal, but I'll just click these little red spots. You'll see them go away. Not quite all the way, but we can just change that opacity to 100% and now it's gone. Let's get rid of those. Now normally what you might do so with an image like this, you might zoom in up here and scan left to right, and then you've got, oops, and then you've got all of these places to look, right? So you see all these dots, so you can scan left to right. I wanna show you a really quick tri trick so that you can actually see these. So if you come down here, you press the spot removal tool. Down here below the image in the toolbar, this little toolbar that's down here, if you don't see this, then press T. So if your screen looks like this right now, Press T, that'll bring up this toolbar, the tool overlay. I can click on visualize spots. And what that does is that that kind of inverts the image, almost like a negative. And now I can see all of these spots. And I can do all of my work while I'm in here. If I want to make this stronger, I can slide this up. Now that's too strong, but I can bring it down until I'm seeing the spots. I've got my spot removal tool already selected. Now I can just come in here, I'll make this a little bit bigger and just click these away. This is so much quicker than if I'm trying to find these on my own. And then what I can do as well is, I'm gonna go over here on the hillside because there were some lights that I wanted to get rid of. Let's undo that one. So there, I wanna get rid of that light. So to do this, so you can see how this spot is really close to the ridge of the mountain here. So I just wanna zoom in to this spot. So I'm gonna hold down the space bar and then click on it. I'm gonna zoom in. Now I can make a little bit more of a defined brush and get right there against that edge without affecting the edge. So I've got that, I've got this, I've got these dots, and I've got this dot. And these here. Now if I come back out, press the space bar, click it. I've got another spot here, another spot here, another spot here. All right, that looks pretty good. Let's unvisualize the spots. And now you can see, let's press H. We'll get rid of all of the spot removal. The sky looks nice and clean. The mount looks nice and clean. Let's go ahead and reset this image. And now you can see all the spots come back.
so that is it that is um you know some of the pieces for spot removal that's how quick it can be so let's do one more let's go to this product photo this is a good one so this is at a violin company that i shot some environmental stuff for you can see now this is a workspace that's going to be filled with dust. I don't want to get rid of all this stuff over here. But if this was like a hero shot of this violin, I would likely want to go in here. I'm actually going to add a little bit of a vignette here. So let's go like this. I want to go in here and probably clean up all this dust on the violin. Um, or at least a lot of it, like what's right here, right in the middle. So again, I will go over to the spot removal tool, come down here to visualize spots. And I can see them right there, and I can just draw right over them. And if I see that it's taking away the texture of the violin, well, then I can come back over here, and I can change the opacity, or I can create a little bit more of a feather so that it's got a little bit more range and make a slightly bigger brush that I'm covering them. And with these, on something where I see that there's texture in the object, I want to try and avoid brush strokes and just go right with the spot removal. So now the spots are just going away. We'll go back in and take a look at how this looks. Let's do a couple more. All right, let's get rid of the visualized spots. And there's the violin now. Let's reset it. So there it was originally. And there it is now. Looks a lot cleaner. Looks great. And uh, those are your basics for spot removal. So the shortcut key to get into spot removal, if you're in the develop module, is Q. Come down here if you need to. Turn on your visualized spots. Keep in mind that cloning will clone texture and color, where heal will clone just texture. Opacity is the amount that that spot removal effect is applied. Feather is how soft the edge is and how far that softness goes out. And then the size is just the size of the brush and that's it. All right, everyone, so thanks for watching. That's a quick Let's Talk Lightroom on spot removal and visualizing your spots. I hope you found that really helpful. Comment below. If you haven't done so, take the time to subscribe. You'll get notifications of all, all my videos. And if you don't know, I'm giving away a Helipack Inspire case for DJI Inspire by Think Tank Photo. It's a beautiful case. It's a $400 case for the DJI Inspire. You can go to that video in the cards. Go over there, all that you need to do is like and comment on the video and be a subscriber, you'll be entered in the giveaway. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you continue to watch. Like I said, if you haven't taken, if you haven't subscribed, click the subscribe button really quick. You'll get notifications of giveaways, of new videos, of all of that. And I try and post four or five days of the week. So hope everyone has a great weekend. You keep watching, I'll keep making videos. Have an awesome weekend.